Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. On today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Silentium PC Fortis 5 ARGB onto an AM4 platform. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in this video, you're not going to need a great deal of tools. Most of the things are included in the pack. One thing you will need is a PH2 screwdriver. But other than that, it's pretty much straightforward. So we're starting off here with our motherboard. This is the MSI B550 Gaming Wi-Fi. The back plate is already in position as it would be from the factory. So the first thing you wanna do is to remove these two plastic lugs. There are four screws that you need to undo to do that. Very simple, just remove those. Once the four screws are removed, you can remove the plastic lugs and put these to one side, put them in your motherboard box just to keep them somewhere safe. The next part of this is to actually install the first part of the standoffs. So in your kit, you'll find there are these four, which have got the plastic knurled sides on them. So just screw those in. You can, if you wish, at the very end, you can use the included spanner just to tighten these up a little bit more, but generally you'll find that hand tight should be absolutely fine. So the next part is to actually attach the top plate. Now the top plate goes with the screws front to back. So one of the screw mountings should be towards your IO shield or your IO, and the other one should be towards your RAM sticks at the front there. So again, depending on which angle you're looking at, just make sure that it's front to back like that. What you wanna do is to actually stand this on top of the pillars. Now you may find that the top plate doesn't always fit down exactly over all of the pins. Now that isn't too much of a problem. Ideally, you would like it so it fits down snugly the first time. You may find there's a little bit of a wobble there. When you actually tighten up the four screws, which go on the top, you'll find that that will push it down. Now this is down to some of the very, very slight tolerances actually in the AM4 back plates. So don't be too concerned. So I would put in one screw, just put it in lightly first of all. You are going to be screwing all four of these screws right down to the very bottom, but we'll do that when they're all actually attached. So on this particular board, this corner here is actually sitting slightly proud. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is to add a little bit more of extra force during the installation, just to make sure that's gone down firmly. There we go, it's just pushed it down a little bit more. So then we've got a little bit more to screw down. So now you should find that that is completely flat. I would say at this particular point, do a quick visual inspection just to make sure that the gaps between those are actually the same all the way around. And looking at this one here, it looks like that is completely flat. If you're not too sure, you can actually check the angle against maybe a PCI slot, that kind of thing, just to make sure that it is sitting absolutely flat. And it certainly does appear to be now. So that's excellent. So that is that part of the job done. That is probably the most difficult part, to be honest with you, making sure that that back plate and the top plate actually match up. Again, you might need to kind of maneuver a little bit to make it sit down completely flush. So that is pretty much it for that part of the job. So let's now get the cooler and the fan ready to be installed. So one of the first things you want to do just to prevent any of those errors down the line is to remove the film off the bottom of the CPU cooler. Don't leave that on. Your temperatures will be absolutely hideous and you could potentially damage your hardware. Next thing to do is to prepare our fan. So the fan would normally be sat actually like this with the wires coming out towards the bottom there. So this is gonna be the top, that is gonna be the bottom, and obviously these are the sides. So what we wanna do is to actually attach the rubber dampeners. So you should find in your pack, there are rubber dampeners four and four. So the ones which are slightly larger, they go on the back, and there's a very small semicircle at the back there, and that just lines up. So you just push those in, and you should find that they just fit snugly in all four of the corners. When that part is done on the back, it should look something like this. Now we can move around to the front section. So we've got, again, another four of these little rubber dampeners. Now these are the ones which actually stop the vibrations of the coil springs or clamp springs. So all you need to do is just to push these in to the holes provided. And now we can put the spring clips in. So 
the spring clips go in on these sides. So again, this is going to be, for me, it's going to be the bottom. This is where the wire is coming out. So all you want to do is to grab your spring clip with these edges inward and just push them through the holes provided and do that on both sides. When you're finished, you should end up with something which looks very similar to this. So you can see the spring clips there, We've got all of our rubber mountings in place and with our cables coming out from this bottom section. Now at this point, you'd be very tempted to actually go ahead and put the fan actually onto the cooler itself, which is something you definitely don't want to do because we do need to still have access to the two screws actually on the base of the cooler. So let's go ahead and install that on the motherboard next. First thing to do would be to install some thermal paste. Uh, you can use the thermal paste which is included. Because this is going to be something which I'm going to take apart very quickly after, I'm just going to use some cheap thermal paste so it doesn't make much difference. They do suggest you just put a, a cross on the CPU, like so. Again, you can use your own preferred methods of installing thermal compound. So the next part is going to be actually to install the cooler. Now again, do double check, make sure you've removed the film, the plastic film on the bottom to obviously protect it in transit, but it will also stop heat flow. So make sure you've removed that. The next thing to do is we need to align the screws here and here, which are sticking out from our top plate and align them with the screws actually on your CPU cooler. Now for me personally, I would say the best thing to do is if you're looking at it, just try and line up one of them first of all and kind of sit it on top and then just gently lower it down into position. Then you should find that it fits in absolutely perfectly. Then we're ready just to tighten up the screws. So the first thing to do is just do a couple of light screw turns just to get things started. If it doesn't feel like it wants to turn first of all, if you unscrew until so you hear that click or notch, that means you've found the thread. Then do maybe two or three turns and then repeat that on the other side also. So, yeah, that feels like it's catching, so that's fine. Again, if you want to, just loosen off until you feel that notch, and then you can tighten up. So then all we need to do is just do alternate turns on both sides, and do maybe three or four turns per side. And just keep on going until both screws are fully tightened. Now you should find when this is done that there will be no movement in the cooler at all and it shouldn't be flopping around or sagging anywhere. So if you move the actual cooler tower, then the whole board will kind of flex with it. So that means the cooler is fully installed. So what we can do now is on the back where we've got our addressable RGB cable, if you take off any of the packaging or the twist sticks which are actually holding the cable in place, you can remove those and then route this somewhere towards the top of your case or wherever your connectors are for your addressable RGB. But now we're ready to install the fan. So I'm gonna put it around this way so you can see exactly how it goes. Now what we wanna try and do is, depending on your case and how much room you've got, you wanna try and get the fan as low down the heatsink as possible. So essentially we're gonna be leaning or resting the bottom plastic bracket here of the fan pretty much exactly on the screw here at the bottom. So what you want to do is to get your cables, get those out either in front or to the side, whichever you choose, ideally with RAM out of the way, and just line up the cooler with the heat sink and try and get the fan as low as possible. Again, that's going to help you when it comes to later on when you're trying to get your case window back on. So make sure the clips are on. And all you want to do is just pull on the side and that latches into place. And then on the other side, do exactly the same, stretch it over and that will hold it in place. If you want to, you can centralize the fan a little bit if it isn't already. I think we're uh, pretty much good to go there. Yeah, that seems to be centralized, so just do a quick spin of the fan just to make sure that it is actually free and not catching on anything. So that is it. That is effectively the CPU part of it, the cooler part of it all done. So all we need to do now is to work out where we're gonna actually attach our cables. So at this point, if you wanted to, you can connect up your addressable RGB. So we have got a pass-through on the addressable RGB. So all you'd want to do is to disconnect one of these and connect in your three pin five volt addressable RGB header, taking care to mark up the arrows. 
so the polarity is correct. Fortunately, with the three pin ones now, it's difficult to do it wrong. With the four pin ones, it was horrible. You had to work out which way they went, but that's absolutely fine. You have got a little cap there, so put that to one side just in case you ever need to blank it off later on. And make sure that the fly lead, which is coming off, is covered. If you have it open like this, then there is a possibility of shorting out the five volt for the motherboard if it touches any metal. So that is the addressable RGB. So now what we need to do is to find a suitable addressable RGB header on your motherboard. For us on this particular installation, our header is just here at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug that in on the top. And then what we need to do is to plug in your CPU fan header. Now luckily again on this board, it's actually very accessible right next to where the cooler is. So all we need to do is to plug that in into the top. And when this is all in your case, you can then cable manage that behind the motherboard, keep it all out of sight. So there we go. That is how to install the Solentium PC Fortis 5 ARGB. Actually pretty straightforward. My only thing would be to say when you are doing the top plate part of the actual mechanism, the mounting mechanism, if it doesn't fit completely flush, which potentially it might not because there is extremely tight tolerances on that piece of metal because it is very solid and if for some reason the screws are just slightly off, then you might find it a little bit difficult to get it completely flush. But do persevere, make sure that it is completely flush and completely flat all the way around. Otherwise you may find that your CPU isn't gonna make full contact with the CPU cooler. So yeah, do bear that in mind. So I think that's gonna pretty much wrap this one up. There is gonna be a unboxing and review of this cooler on the channel also, which you can check out up here if you wanna find out more about it. And we'll do some temp tests, all that kind of stuff, noise tests. Uh, if you've already bought this and you're considering how to install it, then hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content of this on a daily basis, then hit the subscribe button and the chime notification and you'll see new videos daily. So I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.